welcome to Harvest Diary and welcome to ninety days of Bible study. And today we're going to be looking at God's word from Romans four. God's word from Romans chapter four. And um, today we're going to be studying the word of God. I'll read out what the scripture says and then we'll go deeper into it to see what God is saying to us today. Chapter 4 says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh has found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he has yet up to glory, but not before God. For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now to him that walked is a reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. But to him that walks not but believes on him that justifies the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are, co are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Comes his blessedness then upon the circumcision only, upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned. Abraham for righteousness. He was in then he how was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? No, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision, as he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith which he had being yet uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. Though they be not circumcised. The, that righteousness may be imputed to them also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but also who walk in the steps of the faith of our father, Abraham, which he had, which he had been yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world, of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed, through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect, because the law works wrought. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace, to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith, of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who makes alive the dead and called, calls those things which be known as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to According to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone, but it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him, that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our, for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you for your word today. We ask that as we study your word in depthly, that you would breathe on your word and bring the life 
everything that we want our consciousness to understand and know. Praise God. So today, we continue in our study of the book of Romans. That's the Paul, the letter of Apostle Paul to the church at Rome. And the interesting thing about this book is that most of us can relate with the things that Paul, the issues that he's addressing in this scripture because we are likely from um, the, the we are the gentile nations so when he wrote this letter to the to the romans we can relate with the, the, the roman church because we are not like the we are not um most of us are not from israel quote and unquote so Paul talks about he has been talking about how are we justified. So we have been looking at what on what basis can we say that we are the children of God? Or what basis can we say that we have access to the things of God? On what basis can we, you know, is it because we are, we obey the law? Is it because is it only the people that are Jews that will be saved? Is it only the you know, he was just he's trying to help us realize our place in God and the, the reason why we have this place that we have in God. Why do we have this place in God? That is what Paul is is helping us to realize and where is our place in God. Okay, so he says, What shall we say then? That Abraham our father is pertain as pertaining to the flesh as found for if abraham was justified by works he as well of the glory but not before god for what the for what says the scripture abraham believed god and it was counted to him for righteousness now to him that works to him that works is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt or to him that works not but believes but believes to him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describes the blessedness of the man who to whom God imputes righteousness without works. Saying, Blessed are those are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. And this is in reference to Psalm 32 and verse 1. Now, how can you walk? In righteousness how can you walk in righteousness how can you walk in righteousness it is true faith in God true faith in the Son of God by believing in the sacrifice that Christ died for us on the cross that he took our shame he nailed it to the cross he took our sins he nailed it to the cross he took our transgressions our pains the diseases and everything he nailed it to the cross and on that cross he purchased for us righteousness justification he purchased for us healing he purchased for us peace earlier on when we started this bible study we studied isaiah 53 and we read that the chastisement of our peace was upon him the stripes that he received was for our healing by stripes we are healed so we have read about these things but when we believe it when we believe that christ died for you when we believe that he died for you that moment when you believe that christ died for you that moment when we begin to walk in the in the reality when we realize and we believe and we accept the sacrifice made on the cross then we become the righteousness of god praise god what a miracle what a transformation what a what a blessing that when we receive christ that when we accept the finished work of the cross we become the righteousness of god praise god so that is the, the focal point of this scripture today blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin 
You know, there's come this blessedness upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for for righteousness. How was it reckoned to him? Was it when he became circumcised or when he was still uncircumcised? Of course, it was when he was still uncircumcised. He received the the, 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 the circumcision as a sign. As a seal of righteousness of the faith he had in God, then God said, "I will make you the father of many nations." So what are we? What are we saying in essence is that it is not by the acts. It is not the act of of circumcision or whatever that brings us into the righteousness of God. It is our faith in God. It is our faith in God. He says in verse in Romans 4, verse 4, verse 16, says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the, the, to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seeds, not only which is of the law. But to also that which is of faith of Abraham, which is the father of us all. So we receive, we receive righteousness from our faith in God. We receive righteousness as a gift because we believe in God. Because God sealed this in Abraham when he made him the father of many nations. He sealed this in Abraham. So from that time onward, once you believe in God, once you believe in the sacrifice, once you believe in the word of God, you are saved. You receive righteousness, not of your works, but of your faith in God. And so that's why the Bible says that we walk by, by faith, not by sight. Lest any man should boast. It is not because of what we see that we believe. It is because of who he is that we believe in. And because we believe him for who he is, a faithful God, the one that speaks and it comes to pass, the one that gives a word and it is so, the one that says, I am I'm going to give you a hope and a future. The one that says that your tomorrow is good. The one that says that my tomorrow is good. The one that says every good and perfect gift comes from him. The one that says I will do it and he does it. The one that does not change his mind about things. The one that gives a word and it is yea and amen. This is the God that we believe in. This is the God that we serve. And this is our God. He is the unchanging God. He is the ever faithful God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. He changes not. The moment you believe in Him, then you become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. So, we believe God for his word we believe god for who he is we believe god and then once we believe in in him once we accept him as our god once we confess him once we believe him with our hearts then it is counted unto us for righteousness you know when god spoke to abraham he said i will make you the father of many nations he believed it. I'm going to read verse 16, 17 and 18, and then we'll... Hallelujah. It says, Therefore, Romans 4, 16, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, to the, to the, end, the promise might be sure to all the seeds, not to, to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith. Abraham, who is the father of all, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Before him, who may believe, even God, who makes alive the dead, and calls those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, 
that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall your seed be and be not weak in faith he considered not his own body now there that's verse 19 now when he was about the hundred years old neither yet the deadness of sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to god and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness what promise has god given you what does today look like what does today look like for you what what is that thing that looks so big so impossible and you're wondering to yourself can this be fixed and god says he is going to make everything beautiful in his time just like he said to abraham i will make you the father of many he said i've made you the father of many nations and abraham believed despite the fact that he was an hundred year old imagine somebody walking up to a hundred year old man with a 90 year old wife and telling him oh you guys have not had any children i am going to make you fathers a father and a mother look at it from look at it from the angle of our world today it's it sounds awkward like where were you when i was 40 where were you when i was 50 and my wife was 40 maybe i would have believed where were you when my when i was 60 and my wife was 50 maybe i could believe you then but now she's 90 gone past menopause several years ago and you're saying i'll make you a father i've made you a father of nations not even like oh something i would he said i have done it and you're wondering and then this man abraham believed god for his word that was in the most unlikely situation that was like in the most unbelievable scenario ever even today most people will just believe are you kidding me right now don't even talk so people say don't even talk to me about children what, what, what do we need children for but god told abraham and abraham believed god because he knew that without a shadow of doubt when god speaks it will come to pass and we need to get to that level in our lives where what we see does not determine what we believe in terms of <clears throat> half <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> in terms of our physical reality in terms of the the present <clears throat> circumstances when we move past it beyond what we can see oh so somebody says by this time tomorrow he would have a car and you're like are you kidding me i don't have any money in my account this is, this is, this is. but when god tells you he says by this time tomorrow you will have a car and you say yes lord thank you lord and you believe it and then you start oh, what would i do with the car you know and he said oh so when i get the car i'm going to be this i'm going to be that <clears throat> it is counted unto you for righteousness because you believe you you go beyond doubting the word of god to believe in the word of god you go beyond asking how will it come to pass and you just believe that it is going to happen that is faith that is faith excuse me that is faith in god that is believing the word of god so he says i have made you father of many nations at 100 year old 
years old and he believed now when god gives us a word when god gives us a word and promises us i will do this for you it is not our place to ask how or why you can ask how so that your faith will be strengthened but when he gives you the word the first step is to believe now let's look at the story of the life of mary the mother of jesus christ when angel told her that she would she was going to bring forth a child she asked a question how can this be seeing that i know not a man now she wasn't asking in unbelief she just wanted to understand the process and she asked in faith she didn't say never it's impossible no she said how can this be you know seeing that and then god told her through the, through the angel the perfect the spirit of god is going to overshadow her and then he explained the process to her and that was it and she said be it done to me according to your word that is faith when a word is released into your life when god speaks his word when god gives his word and his promise when you read about his word in the scriptures and he speaks to your situation regardless of what the the, the medical reports are regardless of what your your purse your current bank account says when god gives his word it will come to pass so it is not it is our place to respond in faith and say be it done to me according to your word and then if you have a question you can say oh how can this be or how would this be and god will give you a revelation as to how that thing will happen so we need to start living consciously of the word of god of the truth in the gospel of the truth of the word of god and start believing we need to move beyond being spoon fed to, to listening to what god is saying to us part time and to acting according to the faith and acting according to faith in the word of god praise god so when God spoke to Abraham and Abraham believed, it was imputed unto Abraham for righteousness. Praise God. It was imputed to Abraham for righteousness as it will be imputed unto you and I if we believe. When God gives us his word in the book of, I believe it's Kings now, when there was a famine in Israel, and God sent his prophet to the king and said, By this time tomorrow, there will be surplus food. And a, I think a, a cup of wheat or, or this will be what he can. And then somebody was there in you know, unbelief and he says, This is not possible. That this cannot happen. And because of that, he met his water leaf. Because he was told, At that gate, you will see it but you will not eat of it that was it because of the unbelief he expressed he said it is not possible you know he believed he was he was in so much doubt and that was the end for him i pray that when the word of god comes when the word of life comes to you you will be able to accept it and as you accept it it will be imputed unto you for righteousness and you would reap the fruit of your faith in God. Which is why today we can say, I am the seed of Abraham. Why? Because the God gave Abraham his word. I have made you a father of many nations. And today I can say, I am a seed of Abraham. Why? Because Abraham believed God, held on to the word of God, and he became a reality and it was imputed unto him for righteous and verse 23 says now now sorry verse 22 uh, romans 4 22 and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness righteousness 
Now, it was not written for his sake alone, that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. If you will believe, if only you will believe that Christ died for you on the cross, if only you will believe that he purchased peace for you on the cross. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Isaiah 53 and verse 5. If you would believe that he purchased your peace on the cross. If you would believe that he took your transgressions and nailed it to the cross. If you would believe that by his stripes, you are healed. It will be imputed unto you for righteousness and you would have what he has said you would have it you would have it so if you believe today you will be healed if you believe today you would have what he says you would have he says none shall be barren in the land if you believe today you would have what you believe you would have it if you would believe that christ was raised from the dead for our righteousness for our justification if you will believe today you would have what you believe and it will be imputed unto you for righteousness if you would believe today if you would believe the word of god today if only you would believe what do you have to do just believing just believing even if your circumstance today looks impossible. Like, it looks impossible. But God has already said it. And you guess what? He made everything. He said, before you came for, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were brought forth into this world, I called you by name. To the one that called you by name, the one that formed you, the one that knew you before you were formed, before you were conceived, the one that gave his word. Is he not faithful? Is he not just to fulfill his word? Only if you will believe today. The word of life has been released. There are so many promises in the scriptures. Only if you will believe. I'm speaking to you. Yes, you. He says that you are fruitful. You are like a, 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 a fruitful um, tree. He says that your, 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 your seeds surround your table. You are fat and flourishing. He didn't say you are dry and decaying. You are fat and flourishing. That is the word of God for you. That is the word of God for me. He says, their health will I restore. Regardless of what the reports are saying, of what the scans are saying. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from God. Everything that he says, if you will believe, you will receive. Today, you have an opportunity to choose. And I would encourage you to choose life. I would encourage you to choose to believe in God. And as you believe, it will be counted unto you for righteousness. And you will receive the justification that God has given to us through Christ if only you would believe I want to leave us with these words for us to think upon and to, 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 to keep turning and turning over in our minds what is God saying to me today and how will I respond what is he saying to me today and how will I respond Choose faith over fear. Choose faith over fear. Choose faith 
over fear. Choose light. Choose faith over fear. Choose light. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for joining the live broadcast. Thank you everyone that came online today. And thank you to those who would watch this video after today. After this live broadcast. And to those who would share with their friends and family. Thank you so much. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Go through our videos. Give us a thumbs up. If you have any recommendations on how things can be made better, please don't forget to drop your comments. Thank you so much. And if there is a word that has touched you particularly in this in this um, Bible study episode, please drop your comments so that others too can learn from you. Thank you for coming up live. Thank you for joining this podcast. God bless you and have a very, very blessed day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.